What's up guys? You got some mail today. Got two of these really cheap light kits I ordered. They were like less than $10 a piece. So ended up getting two of them. They come with eight bulbs. Here we go. We got, you got four of these, amber, yellow, whatever you call them. You got your two for the back and then two headlights. Nothing fancy enough. And they come with these cool things. Like if you want to mount them on, you know, a cheap body that doesn't have buckets or whatever you can these come with washers and screws so you can mount these and then you just put the headlights right in these they fit right in there perfectly just like so they look really good too so anyway it's not bad for 10 bucks though and we got a uh one of the metal brush guards coming i think it was for a bronco though i thought i was getting it for my chevy but then I found out it's actually a Bronco one, but it's that metal brush guard that goes on the front here, and it's got two lights on it. I'm going to make it work on my Chevy. I don't think there's going to be much difference in them. We'll find out. If not, it'll go on my wife's truck. I'll just have to get another one. Anyway, that's the lights. $10 a set. Not bad. Eight of them. They all run off one. They're already wired. and They, they seem like they'll go. Let me see how long they are. Now, see, in this truck up here, all I need is two yellow bulbs. And I'm probably just going to cut two off of one and put them up here because I have a light box that you can hit buttons and make them do different things. I'm going to keep it like that. Now, my wife's truck has no yellow in the front. It's just got headlights and taillights. That's all this truck has. So we're going to put a whole new kit in hers. Her backlights are actually uh, white bulbs that I just got put in there, and it makes it kind of purple looking. So we're going to put a whole new kit in this truck. And then really, I got the second kit, like I said, just for two yellow bulbs because it costed more to buy a pack of these bulbs than it did to get this whole kit. And even though they're bigger than the little ones here, I'm making my own mounts. I drill my own holes for the headlights and I'm drilling my own hole down here for the, for the yellow light. So ain't going to matter. We're going to use it. All right, guys. Here's where we're at with the light kit. We're, we're installing it in my wife's truck so far. This is what I had cobbled up in there. Two headlights, two taillights that were white, and they just lit up a little bit red for you. That cobbled up mess is what I had just so that there would be lights. Not no more. They like say when you can get something less than $10, it's worth trying. And I've already plugged these in. They work. They light up nice and everything. So, only thing I have to do since I'm putting the four yellow lights up front, I just have to make them fit the bigger bulbs. And this one here, I just made my own holes for the headlight like I do the other ones. So, I'll just be drilling my own hole for those as well. So, it don't really matter. I just have to make these side ones a little bigger carefully or just glue them in one. We'll find out in just a minute. I need a new body for my wife's truck, that's for sure. This Bronco body has seen better days long before I got it. It was already down and ready to go, but we're going to make it work. Let's get some lights in it. All right, here we are. We got the pack open. I went ahead and I drilled out the holes I needed here in the uh, front. Now, this one's a little bit different. When you do the blazers... You can just take them light buckets right out. But on here, it's basically, I think, the whole grill. I didn't take all that out. I just drilled straight through both times. I got my headlight one there already made. So I just, you know, lined it up with the center the best I could from back here. And I, I drilled. I got this drill bit that's a little smaller than, than the bulb. And then I ream it out, you know, make it fit. And then for the, the side lights here, we're going to see how they look. But I went ahead and. I ream them out also. There we go, guys. My $8 light kit turned out good. On camera, these look a little white, but off camera, they're not. They're really yellow. It's just this light's kind of... It's there. See, with my fingers there, you can tell. But it's kind of just blurring. You can, you can tell. Once I put my hand there, you can tell that it's yellow. But for some reason, my camera's not showing it because the other light's blowing in front of it. But on the side, you can tell. Now, 
anyway, I think they turned out great. Eight dollar kit, you cannot beat it. I mean, there you go. Now you can see that they're yellow. It looks pretty good right there. All right, what do you guys think? Eight dollar kit. It wired in. It reached. Everything worked fine. I just forgot this has a side marker red one, but now I know I have to tie in some three millimeters later. I bought two of them kits. I'm going to take the yellows off here, put in right here. I don't have a ball yet, so I either need to buy another three millimeter because this is running to a box that can do different things. So I have to actually run them, cut them off here, but run them to a plug and plug them to that box because I want the features of flashing and everything on that truck. So anyway, that's where we're at. We got lights on the wife's truck all the way around. So I think now, before we go out and test on the course, since this truck's out of commission right now anyway. So what I'm thinking is it's finally time to take them shocks off this blazer, the Desert Lizard 90 millimeters. And we're gonna put them on the Gen 8 just for a test run. Cause that truck sucks. The suspension sucks. The truck don't suck, the suspension sucks. So we're going to find out, is it worth buying another set or not? What's going on, everybody? Well, we got the light kit installed in my wife's truck, and it turned out great. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. We got the Gen 8 on the bench. This truck, I love the truck. I've always hated the suspension on it. My other Gen 8, I've changed a few things around. I've tried different shocks. Never made it any better. Never put the money into Desert Lizard shocks, none of that. So when I got this one, I actually just kept tuning the stock shocks and did a lot better than what I did on the other truck, but it still sucks. And we're going to find out. We're going to take my best shocks off the Blazer, which is the Desert Lizard ones. I got them tuned the way I love them. Not only are we going to put those on the Gen 8, see how much better it makes it, and see if we can eliminate some torque twist. We're going to put these shocks on the Blazer and see how bad it makes it. Might as well. You know, I don't want to just leave one sit there with nothing on it. We're going to drive them both. So, and also, you can see, uh, since the high trail is out of commission until I get the servo fixed, I just went ahead and took the, the flat irons off for the Gen 8 because these are awesome looking rims, but they, they kind of sink in to where you almost need at least a five, mil, five millimeter hex to stick them where they should be. That's the only thing. It makes them narrow. And with this truck being tippy already, it's not a good combination. So we're going to go ahead and put the flat irons on. They actually stick out a little more like they should. And we're going to run with them. We're going to give this truck all the all that we can to make it better. I should, I don't, I'm not putting a 1080 in it. It's got this 1060 and I don't even know if I've drove it since I've done that. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to swap the wheels, swap the shocks and see what happens. Well, all right, we're getting into the process here. We got one off of there and one off here. We're swapping. I'm going to make sure they got grease or oil and everything in them. Tune them as we go. Um, Red Cats, they're assholes for putting that screw behind this thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is a pain, though. You got to take your portal off just to put the shock on or off. Anyway, here's my question is, is Red Cat, if you look up the length of their shocks... They are, I think they say 97.5 millimeters, something like that. Now, somebody else might have to Google it and find out exactly what it says. But I thought it was just under 100 millimeters. Now, if that's being the case, why is my Desert Lizard shock actually taller than if these are supposed to be 100 millimeter, just about? These are 90s on Desert Lizard shocks. These are 90 millimeter Desert Lizards according to the thing. And they are taller than these 100, I mean the, the 97.5, whatever it is. So now, just because I have to, I'm going to Google it and see what size it's supposed to say and throw it on the screen here if I can. And then we're going to find out. It'd be like right, let's see, it'd be like right there. You know, I might just go ahead and put it like all the way across right here. There you go, how's that? 
Right. I know it ain't gonna be able to get up there, so let's just put it right there. <laughs> well, all right, guys, check this out. We got the shocks all swapped around. I've been wanting to do this for close to a year. I've been wanting to put them, some desert lizard shocks on this thing. So, look how good that's low. Mm, I can't wait to test that out. And, of course, we got the, sh the crappers over here. So, it might not be bad on here. Look at that Beeble Bobble, just like the other one was. Not as bad. This ain't like that no more. Well, all right, guys. We're going to head out to the course. I do got a bad plug on this one battery here. Kind of hard to get a good connection. And I got my winch and everything wired in. But anyway, we are running that 1060 type ESC that come out of one of them, uh, like a trail runner or something. Man, them wheels look good on here. Look at this, already, I'm not seeing zero torque twists, e even when I go in reverse, none. Did I eliminate torque twists with some simple shocks? And that's pulling a trailer. I put the trailer on here just to see, because, I mean, I'm uh, so proud of my TRX-4s not having it, but this thing has never been torque, tw torque twist free. So we're gonna head out here toward the course and we're gonna see what's up. Cause that right there, I'm already impressed and I just got out the door. So that's a good thing. We're gonna get over here. We're gonna cut through some dips and daps. All right, well, we're gonna put this little bit of the structure to work here a little bit. It's even pulling straight without me having to adjust it all the time. Look at this. Oh my, my, my. You don't know how long I have waited to see this truck go straight. I mean, we're pulling this. This has always been one of the Gen 8 is probably one of the toughest wagon pullers you can have. TRX4 also, but Gen 8s are, they got some tough gears, man. It's just the suspension's horrible. Wow, look at that, man. I hope I'm getting it on video because this camera is mounted different. We're even coming up at a side hill right here and it's keeping it the way it should. When I used to pull a trailer with this truck here lately, one side would rear all the way up, the other side would be on the wheels, but then there'd be nothing but a big gap on the passenger side. I'm not doing that now. Full throttle even, no issues. Both sides look the same, to be honest. Look at that. She's coming at me straight. All right. I had to do a little editing right there because I just kept bragging and bragging about these shocks on here compared to what it used to be. I guess it's just blowing my mind. I finally, finally, finally seem to have it leveled out. So we're going to pull the pin on this trailer and we're going to get over here and have some fun. It's dark on us already. At least it will be. This is rocket right here. Let me go ahead and turn the other truck on and get it off the trailer. Well, all right, just really quick, since I already know this is probably gonna be horrible compared to normal. Let's just see how this thing rides if we get torque twist on this thing. Now everybody knows TRX-4s do not have torque twist, Harley. Let me straighten up my steering here. Here we go. For some reason, these shocks look like they're going to be a lot better on this truck. I'm not saying they're going to be good, but maybe just the TRX4 is built in a different way that it might not affect it so bad. It's kind of a softer ride, and it sits up higher. Seems like it shouldn't be, but it does. You know what? Let's just go for it, man. I'm gonna lock in and go. Let's try some hard stuff here. Because honestly, I think the Red Cat shock has potential. Okay. Wonder if this Red Cat's gonna do the same. I mean, it's riding level. I did adjust. I had to put oil in these ones a little bit, but not bad. You 
You know what? I think we can live with what they're doing in this truck. It's got me up a little bit higher because they're the springs you adjust just a little bit, but hey, I'm not I'm not mad about it. I'm actually kind of surprised. I mean, look, look at her go. And it's not twisting on me. That's the thing. It's not going all loop de loop de whoop de. Okay, man. All right, I got a spot right here that can really test them. Let me get over here so I can see. Look at here, look at here. This is a good test spot. Well, that back tire's gonna come off there in a minute. Oh, man. You know, sometimes it's amazing how you can just swap something like that and not be nowhere near as bad on the other vehicle as it was but yet the other vehicle is better when you change something so i'm honestly not mad about that right there well let's go here and test the new obstacle that we haven't even ran on yet i've never ran this obstacle right here first time let's go for it i might as well just turn my light on now there we go it kind of helps the picture I mean, honestly, you can't even, you can't tell that it's the Red Cat shock on this truck. Luckily, these trucks do not have that kind of torque twist, I guess, and wow. Now this, I don't know, I better line up for this. Let's see what's up. I'm very happy with the, with the outcome of these shocks on this truck. I was not expecting any kind of pleasant run out of it oops sorry again okay right here i forgot to put a board still <laughs> there's supposed to be another board right here so can we even do this without one sure almost we got a tire fell down in it get out of there okay Again, first time. This was lined out for the high trail, so it might be a little wide as well. See, now look at these shocks. They're working, man. They're working. The Red Cat is so much heavier, I think. I need to weigh these trucks, to be honest. Okay, now this looks kind of interesting here. Back tire's coming off, but we're keeping it up. Somehow, that back tire had rolled the edge just now. Well, all right. Oops, I about tripped over something there. Now, again, I hadn't rode none of this stuff. It's just something we came up with out of the boards, and I guess we're gonna call this the roller coaster. Roller coaster of love. Okay, just go, man, just go. You can do it, dude. Red cat shocks or not, you can do it. Oh, man. I don't know what it is. I'm almost liking the different run of this truck. I'm not hating it. I honestly thought, well, I guess I'll put him on here and complain about it and then just park it for a while, too. Take the servo off and put it on the high trail. But I'm not going to do that now. This truck is doing his job. Uh-oh. Whoa. And right there, my red cat would have been gone with, with these shocks. Because everything I got out here is kind of leaning a little bit since I did some building on it. I got some adjusting to do. That's the reason this truck looks like it's actually leaning is because it is. The, the whole course is leaning. So, I'm very happy. And this wasn't the one we were really testing. This was the one we thought was going to be bad. But you can't beat a TRX 4 Harley. It doesn't really matter. I mean, 
I always thought that, man, the TRX4 shocks must be pretty good, but honestly, it's just the truck is built so well. Everything is proportioned the way it's supposed to be to work together, and you get this result, you know? Which basically is unstoppable. For a trail truck, anyway. I mean, yes, we're not out rock crawling here, but... Now, I wonder, let's go second gear here for a minute. See if it's got a lot of, a lot of crooked to it. It doesn't, I mean, look at it. Uh-oh, the battery's dead. She just kicked down, but hey, we got our run in. She did it, uh ooh. Do I have enough power to go through there now? Better get it back. Let's get her on the trailer before she quits. I knew this battery was low. I didn't even charge it, so. I'm a very happy person with the way these shocks are. Look at that thing. It's straight as can be. So why does the Gen 8 go so crooked with every shock you put on it? I don't know. Except for, we're going to find out now. Maybe this trailer was keeping the truck straight. Let's find out. All right. And again, guys, I apologize for being so late. The picture quality has never been great when it starts to get dark, but I want to have some fun. So, therefore, I'm going to play anyway. So, we're going to go ahead and take that same... I mean, I'm just blown away. I'm sitting there watching this truck stay almost level all the way around the corner and everything, and I'm blown away. I've waited so long for that. And I should be running the camera that's on there. I did check one of the videos. It's not bad. It'd be great for video in the truck in front of it. <coughs> we get the same angle shot here. I do got it set for its lowest position as well. I can adjust it up like three holes on the shock mounts if I wanted it up higher for belly rub. But I figured I'd start with the lowest that way it's the least tippiest or whatever. Well, I hit that wrong, but I think we had it. That was just a bad run right there. Let's do it again. When you're looking at the camera instead of the car, you tend to have issues. And again, like I said, we do got this down low too. Oops. I think these tires are a little wider than what the other truck is now too. Like I say, my other rim's kind of stuck in here. Let's get where I can see what I'm doing. All right, well, let's just do that then. Don't tell, it ain't the suspension, I know that. It's probably the driver. And my steering is turning one way more than it should be. There we go. Now, there's some of that torque twist we're looking for, but I think that's <laughs> that's not the torque twist. That's the body. I mean, the, the obstacle on it. I'm not on it very square there. I think we failed that one compared to the other. Let's set it up again. This truck is so heavy as well. It's a brute. I don't know how much stuff I got in this truck, but it's a lot. Now let's see what this uh, 1060 can do on the downhill. Oops. Uh, nothing like a 1080. I say I think this come out of one of them Enduro uh, trail runner or something. Also, I think I turned that trim the wrong way a little bit. That could be part of it. Hold on. A little better. Steering's crooked. There we go. A little better. Sorry, guys. Let me dial it in. Let's get back to driving. I could take forever sometimes, I know.
and again guys i really appreciate y'all liking and subscribing and commenting and talking to me and i got a pr pretty boring life so i enjoy the comments and getting some feedback i need to take this hitch out of the truck i forgot one second let me get rid of that easy as pie I'm going to say the Blazer's outperforming the Gen 8 as well. At least I'm not hitting the right lines or something. There we go. I just got to take a different spot. This truck is a little longer. Alright, let's get the other angle. Everybody's probably thinking we'll just shut up and drive. We'd enjoy the video more. I probably would too. A month hey, this truck would have done flipped by now right here. There's no way I would have pulled out of that. And not only did we pull out, but we drove through it. Huh. So guys, anybody that hasn't figured it out by now, yes, I would put desert lizard shocks on my Gen 8 if I was you. I have suffered through this crooked truck so long. And I can just see the difference already, you know, within the first 10 minutes of being outside. It's night and day. Look, right, right here, I know I would probably roll if I come off right here. That spot right there would have probably flipped me. God, I hate that dang body popping out. Mine actually doesn't, it's not Velcroing down real tight. So anyway, I think we went all the way over to the new obstacle now. Let's do that. I mean, look at that thing creep through there. It's still straight, too. I think my body on this truck's a little bit twisted. The body itself. <laughs> So now, let me see how much wider is this thing than the board. Now the Blazer didn't have no issues on these obstacles up here. I know that. So let's find out what's about to happen now. Yeah, it's about the same width, I'd say. A touch wider maybe, because it is hanging over the board. All right. Made short work of that, except I messed up. That was me, not the truck. I guess you'd have to say it's still looking a lot better for the... <laughs> Good Lord, man. Danger, danger. I guess that obstacle's not as easy as you'd think it is, is it? Sorry. This is my first run with this truck on it. And that's the body almost, I think, but... I guess she's a little crooked there, but not bad. We made that one. Okay, here's a good test. I can't really see what I'm doing, but we're going to go for it. I'm going to tell you what this truck needs now. Definitely needs the Hobby Wing 1080. Oh, that is actually a pretty good obstacle, because right there is tricky. Tricky, tricky. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not hating, I'm not hating at all. I think it was a fair swap on the shocks. I mean, the, the Blazer can handle the performance loss. It's not really hindering it bad. And it's definitely improving this truck. All right, this is... All on the driver's air right here, let's see. Okay, we had to save it, but this truck weighs about, shoot, I don't know. It's like a, it feels like a 10 pound truck, if you ask me. I might have to get some scales out now and figure that one out. It's not that heavy, obviously, but I got the two ESCs in it for the winch and everything. Not to mention the truck is just a beast. From get go. Ooh. 
<laughs> Let's see how close this one was to coming off. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to save it. Whew, I don't know about that. Can we do this? Front tire gonna go over. All right. Oh, we made it. My bumper was caught on that car. That might actually helped me. I don't know. The biggest thing that you notice though is that downhill, I mean, that 1080 is just the, the king for brushed ESCs. I haven't tried that 70 yet, that 70 ESC, whatever it is, but like I said before, I can't solder, so I don't have the stuff to do a good solder job, so I haven't even thought about ordering it. I guess having Bluetooth capability is pretty cool, but Okay, I say the Gen 8's coming back for a, you know, redemption on it's sitting on the shelf a while. Me and my TRX4s have been having too much fun together. This little fella's like, nah, -uh, you ain't, you 